I thought I'd make a video today about how to print flexible filaments on a regular 3D printer. Uh, something that's not very fancy, doesn't cost a lot of money, uh, but still allows you to print all the parts that we like to use for our quadcopters. Uh, we like to have flexible, flexible mounts for our GoPros and uh, protection for the arms and things like that. So I've been 3D printing for about a year now and uh, I originally got just what I thought was going to be a starter printer, something to kind of just try it out. Um, I wasn't expecting to be able to print to print uh, TPU. Um, the printer was not advertised as being able to do that. The printer that I purchased was the Monoprice Select Mini version 2. Uh, this guy was about 180 bucks and I still think that's about the price today. Um, I have made some modifications to the printer, but uh, you don't have to do anything to this printer the way that uh, it comes out of the box in order to print flexible stuff. In fact, it's it's printing a TPU part right now. So that's what it looks like. So the way this printer works, uh, it uses a Bowden tube over here. Uh, it's this white tube. Uh, it pushes the filament the extruder drive motor is right up here and it pushes the filament down this tube into the hot end where it melts and the hot end moves around, puts the melted filament down onto the bed and creates a part. So the challenge with this style printer is how do you get a rubbery noodly piece of filament to be pushed down a flexible tube uh, and into the right shape at the bottom. So this is TPU, you can see just how bendy it is. And then if you look at PLA, uh, this guy is a lot more stiff. So this is easier to push. Um, so that that's why this style of printer is more suited for printing uh, PLA than it is for TPU. So yeah, the question now, how, how do we do this? And when I first started, I ran into some issues uh, this is one of them. This is a earlier piece that I printed and you can see it's it's kind of stringy looking, um, kind of hollow. You can see it looks a little bit lighter in color because the layers just are not adhering to each other. Uh, there's a little bit of gap kind of between the lines and uh, they call this under extrusion. This is what it should look like. This is a later print. <clears throat> you can see it's kind of glossy and more transparent. Everything's just a little bit uh, more filled in, and the edges are, are, are nice. Uh, this is what it should look like. So that's one issue I had when I first started doing this. Another, another problem I had was um, these goober things on the outside. Basically, uh, the outside of my print would kind of collect all of this extra material. There would be strings and globs and things like that that would end up uh, where they're not supposed to on the outside of the print. And they're supposed to look all solid like that. So the settings that I adjusted um, might be a little bit unconventional. Here's a piece that I'm working on right now and I'll show you my settings here. Uh, so actually before I get into that, first thing I should mention, I always leave the material as PLA uh, in, here in Cura and I change the profile I make all of my setting changes here under the profile, so uh, I've, I've created my own custom uh, profile settings, but everything that I, I do, I use PLA as the material for a constant starting point, and then I just adjust things from there. Okay, so here are my settings for TPU. This is the most common profile that I'm using for TPU. Um, so layer height, I've got a 0.175, which is um, a good height for uh, like a normal print. It's not super fine, it's not super tall. Uh, it's kind of middle of the road. Initial layer, uh, I think these are the defaults uh, for the normal profile on um, PLA, but yeah, 0.2625 is good for this machine. I think these wall thicknesses are all defaults as well. Um, Infill density, I will vary this uh, depending on the piece that I'm printing. So for a small piece like the one uh, I was working on earlier, that one I will print at 
um, just because it's small and uh, has some holes and things like that. So uh, bigger parts I will print at a lower infill density uh, to reduce the weight and to change the properties of the, the part. So if I want it squishier, like a GoPro mount that I'm trying to reduce jello and absorb vibrations, I will, uh, I will go with a lower number here for the infill density on something like that. Um, build plate temperature, um, I'm actually running at 50. I think I've overridden that uh, somewhere around here. Basically, I use 50 as my uh, build plate temperature. Um, print speed, I do not go 50. This is getting overridden on the next tab, but um, yeah, don't go 50 with TPU. You gotta go much, much slower. All right, one more feature that I found to be really useful for TPU is this uh, combing mode feature. So I've set that uh, to all. There's a couple options. Um, I found all to be the best, best one. What this feature does is uh, it keeps the print head above the piece that you're printing and inside of the, um, the area of the piece as much as possible. So it, it minimizes those movements that might cause uh, kind of stringing or goobers on the outside of your part. So this is really um, a good feature when you're printing a flexible filament. Else. These are all the defaults except for uh, this. I added a skirt here, uh, which basically just kind of helps to prime the nozzle uh, and get, get the material um, kind of melted and flowing before it gets to your part. It just prints like a line on the first layer around your part. Um, another one that I have adjusted here is I, I changed the print sequence to one at a time whenever I can. Uh, what this means is if I got multiple parts on the print bed, it's not going to go back and forth as much. It's going to do one part. Um, from the ground up or from the, from the print bed up at a time. So that keeps the print head over the part and keeps the material from uh, kind of stringing and oozing and forming those goobers on the outside as it moves around between parts. Uh, as I mentioned, this part that I was printing, this was 100% infill. That's where I've overridden it here. Um, I, my temperature for TPU, I use 220. Seems to work fine. Now this is where things get a little strange. Um, my flow rate, I've changed to 132% of the normal PLA flow rate. And what I'm going for here is I really want that nozzle to have some pressure that it's just kind of squirting that material into the part and bonding those layers together. And this right here, I think is the key to getting those pieces that have um, a more of a solid look to them instead of having um, kind of a lighter in color, kind of stringiness to them. Um, so this right here, I think is an important uh, important feature or setting to change. Uh, print speed, also extremely important. When you're, when you're using a flexible material uh, and a Bowden tube set up like this, you've gotta go slow. The reason being uh, the nozzle may not melt fast enough and the uh, extruder is trying to push the material uh, through that gap right there into this tube. What happens is if things can't, if things aren't melting fast enough on this end, let's say your temperatures are too low uh, or you're just trying to go too fast, uh, there's just too much resistance coming from the hot end here and the uh, this gets bound up. So your, your filament will just kind of bend right there and then it gets pushed up and out and the print, the print uh, gets destroyed. Everything just kind of falls apart. So go slow with TPU. I cannot stress that point enough. Um, what else? Wall speed, I've set even slower. Um, top and bottom speed, everything really, really slow. That first layer, it, it just goes around really slow and lays down a nice consistent bead. And that's what you want. Um, so yeah, those are my settings. One other feature that people sometimes uh, change is retraction. Uh, they will disable retraction when printing flexible filaments. I personally like to leave this enabled. Um, I get less stringing and less goobers when I have retraction on and I don't have any, any issues really with, um, with the retraction binding up the filament or anything like that, uh, as long as you keep the print speed slow.